I'm Stephen Ben Denoon, and you're watching Denoon Institute of Biblical Research, isareturns.com. We are here at the Jordan River, and the river behind me, this is the very river in which John took and baptized Yeshua when he came to him. And of course, he bare the record that the one that God would show him that the, that the Spirit of the Lord would descend like a dove, in the form of a dove, and rest and stay upon. This was the one indeed who would be Mashiach, the Messiah. And it was this river here where this actually took place at. One thing when I think about Yeshua and I think about the river here behind me, it always reminds me of the waters of life. The very thing that's spoken of spiritually and throughout the, the Tanakh that speaks about the life of God the life of God that we have need of inside of us. The very life of God that was inside this one human being that we called Jesus of Nazareth, or Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. He came to this land, and at his baptism, he was washed. He was the Lamb of God that had to be cleansed, before being presented as a sacrifice. He was held up, as we know, by judgment, under judgment for three days before he was actually crucified. Everything that he did was biblical prophecy being fulfilled. It was every law that we had in Levitical law that was given for the ordinance for the sacrifice to be offered. He fulfilled those, those very things, including the bank baptism, baptism. In Jewish life, we had what we called the mikvah. And the mikvah is where you went for your ritual cleansing. In biblical times, both men and women had to go there. It was important before they could rejoin the community once again. So it was no unusual thing for Jews to see water baptism. But like I say, the waters of life, I, always comes to my mind, the waters of life. We're here in Galilee right now, and everything here is about water. In fact, when the little woman come to him of uh, Samaria, which is not too, too far from here, he said to her, if you knew who it was that was speaking to you, you'd ask me for a drink, and I would give you waters that you don't come here to draw any longer. And she said, Sir, the well is deep and you have nothing to draw with. And she, and of course, Yeshua was speaking about that water of life. He said it'd be a, a, a water that would be springing up with inside of you. And in fact, if you ever go and trace the scripture out where that's at, I believe that's Isaiah 12. I could be wrong on the exact spot. But it's very interesting. You should read the passage there. It's a direct reference to God himself. So when he talks about that water of life springing up from within inside of you, we find out that Hashem himself became, he became that sacrifice for sins. And it's what he did that restored the life that was lost in the Garden of Eden. The very life that as Jews we looked for for 1500 years when Yeshua came on sight. We had been looking, we'd been trying to find a way to get back to what Adam and Eve had, the eternal life from the Eitz Chaim, the tree of life, the very tree of, li tree of life that was imparted to Adam and which Eve also received. Another thing when I come here to the Jordan River here that I think about is John himself. The scripture says that John was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. And there's nothing strange about that because we find that when God first filled Adam, in the scripture in the Hebrew tongue, he says, Nishmat Chaim, he breathes the breath of life into his nostrils. The Chaim is a plural form. And we know that it's the fruit from the tree of life because the tree of life is Eitz Chaim. And it was not a fruit that you would just go and partake yourself. It was a fruit that God gave. It was something that was free. It was something that was done without anything that you did. And that's why we see the gift 
of God, of eternal life, still being a free gift. Nowhere do we find that Adam and Eve went and partook of the tree of life. They partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but not the tree of life. The tree of life was breathed into them. That fruit went inside of their soul and they became a living soul. But when the fall came, this was what was lost. And this was what was so vital was the restoration of that life. But God took and he put the cherubims there to, to guard or to preserve the way of life so that man would not put forth his hand and take for himself. It's interesting, the scripture says at the marriage supper that there was one that was found there without the wedding garment on. He had climbed in some other way, looked for another way to get there. There's only one way to get to God. And that's through Yeshua, that's through Christ, Mashiach. He is that only way. And so, Water baptism is only a part of it. It is a cleansing. It is part of, your, part of your marriage ceremony to God. It is you taking upon His name. And that's why I think it's so important that when you're baptized, baptize in His name. Baptize in the name of Yeshua. The Yeshua means Jehovah is our salvation. You are taking upon the name of God Himself when you do it. And that's exactly... When we look at Matthew 28, which is interesting, in the original Greek text in many of the early Greek Bibles, you don't have baptized in Father, the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But yet, nonetheless, even if you were to say that, if you were to baptize that way, that name is Yeshua HaMashiach. Because he said, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. Anyhow, though, once we're baptized in water, we are then candidates for that life, the life of God to come upon us and to come into us. And it's not something that you have to wait for, it's a gift. In fact, well, I say not to wait for, he did tell the apostles, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you're endured with power from on high. See, but there was no works that needed to be done, only belief. For all things are possible to them that believe. The restoration is the tree of life. And we see that God is that tree of life. Yeshua was Eitz Chaim Began Edan. He was that tree of life in the Garden of Eden. That's why we see him breathe on his apostles after the resurrection. And he says, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Why does he say this? showing to the Jewish people, to our people, that He was indeed Mashiach, that He was God Himself in the Garden of Eden. That's why He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, just like God did to Adam. And when He breathed into Adam, He breathed the plural form of that life. The Chaim, the Chaim is God's own life in a plural form. And so this, in this case here, we see no place where Eve ever had to have in her nostrils breathed in the breath of life. She already had it. And this is why John, the very man that baptized in these waters here, this is why John had to be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. He is a type of Eve. He is a type of what was lost in the Garden of Eden just as Yeshua is a type of Adam. He's the second Adam. And John is a type of the bride who come forth filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon. You're watching Danoon Institute of Biblical Research and Israel Returns. God bless you.